All right, guys, this is the stuff you're going to need to put this together, all right? You got uh, your old Ruger 1022 stock, right, which are very important. You want to keep this piece. You want to unscrew this and keep this piece. I'll show you what I do with it later, right? It's easy. It's just like it's a simple little project, and you can have the same results I do in, you know, in one day, not even a few hours to do this, all right? So you need PVC pipe. You need an end cap, right? You need uh, a coupling, right? A little uh, plug, right? This I'm just trying to give you an idea. You need another uh, another coupling, but one is uh, one is uh, smooth and one is threaded. Okay, you need one of these jammies, whatever you want to call them. It's you know it's smooth inside, right? And you got a uh, little threads on the outside, and that goes into these couplings, you know. Okay, you got the idea with that. And, you know, there's a couple of these, right? Like I said, they're smooth, they're, they're, they're uh, half glue, half uh, half thread couplings. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you right now how to prep the stock, okay? You got to remember, when you're doing this, right, basically it's a one-shot deal because if you mess up, you're going to have to get another stock. So, oh, I'm a little shaky here. But know what? What the hell? I'm going to give it a shot. Right? Okay, so let me uh, show you how I just prep the stock. Okay, on the, the back part of the stock, the butt plate here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my piece of PVC, right? And I'm going to draw my line because I want this, this is where my cheek rest is going to be. So I want it in the same level as the old stock. Right? I'm going to take a marker. You know, I, I'm not a big measuring guy. I, you know, learn to work by eye. And the long one would help you out. Right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a line. Going straight across, right? Here we go. I got my line marked here. So this is what I'm going to be cutting off. But, let me fill that line in. All right? So now, but I want to come down, right? And I want to cut along this right here. You know? So, in other words, I cut here, and I'm cutting along the, 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 the hand grip over here. So I'm going to get rid of this whole piece of chunk. And then after, later on, once I get... What I'm doing over here, I'm going to cut the rest of the piece off. I'll show you. But this is, my first cut is going to be like that. Look at this stupid mark. I keep on racing it. Uh, okay. Like I said, I do things by uh, by eye all the time. Like I said, guys, make sure you save this back butt plate because you're going to need it for later on. Alright. Alright, guys, this is what I got so far. So I cut my line across here. And went down over here. You know, don't worry about this because now I'm going to have to measure. Okay, where's my coupling? All right. I'm going to measure where this coupling is going to go, how far it's going to seed in, right? And then I'm going to use my uh, my Dremel uh, sander to uh, round it off where I could get this piece in there. Okay, you following me so far? It's quite simple, you know? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, guys, this is what I got so far. I cut the, the, the stock off, the, uh, the butt plate, right? This one, I just cut them down, and this is what I got now, right? While I was at it, I cut this piece off too, all right? That's your, uh, your four in there, right? And what I did here, I hope you guys are seeing this pretty good. I left a little, this is where the gun drops in, right? And I left this little space over here where my fit in, once I round this off, my fitting is going to go in there, okay? So my fitting is going to go slide right onto that wood right in there once I round it off, right? You're going to have on the bottom a little bit of a lip, a little bit of an open down there. But I'm going to try to figure out a way how to correct that. So by the time I show you the finished product, it should be all corrected. But that's what I got. That's the, the hardest part and the most scariest part is cutting your stock down. Remember, you have to leave room... So you could get your couplings over it, okay, over the wood. Same thing with the back. You got to leave room. You got to weld that, round that out to get your coupling on the back, all right? And that's where you're going to have your stock. Oh, you guys are back. You startled me. That's my, like, reenact. That's, like, my scenario video. Oh, you guys are here. Let me let me show you. Come on. Come over. Let me show you what's going on. Oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> All right, 
right, this is what I got, you know. All right, so you guys might have seen a little horrifying you cut of stock up. But you know what? It turned out to be a pretty fun project. All right, so what I did is, uh, all I did right here is I, if you look, you can see I just grind it all around. And I grind it all around the front, right? But you got to make sure when you're grinding, right, this front piece, you got to make sure your barrel, right, is not going to be touching the piece you're putting on front. You see what I'm saying? So you got to make sure you're, about, you're grinding that low enough to go in. So I grinded that piece already. I cut a hole in this fitting, right? I put a set screw in there. Not a set screw, just whatever. I put a screw through it, right? And it's going to hold it down to that part pretty tightly. So, uh, hold on. Where's that screw? Where's that screw? With the magic of photography, I shall make the screw appear in... Let's see, right here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm like in a silly, silly mood today. <laughs> oh, see how it appeared there? Magic. All right, so in other words, you got to remember, guys, on the front piece, because you're cutting down a little lower, right? You want to get a little piece of wood that you're going to wedge in the bottom, right? And then you're going to drill your hole with this little bit of a, like a shim. Put a little shimmy in there. Then you're just going to put your little, your screw through, get a little shimmy. All right, I don't got the shimmy lined up right. Let me just get it on tight for you, just to show you how it looks. All right? With the magic of editing, I shall have this screw in right now. Oh, look, it's in. Oh, I'm having fun, guys. All right, so there you go. See, I got the front part. Of, this butterfly nut's not staying on there. Just, I'm going to have a regular screw in it, and I'm going to countersink them. I'm going to countersink this top one, too. All right? And that's going to hold, uh, hold on there good. All right, so I got that on. Now, here's my back piece, and this is going to go on here. You see over here, I got my little butt plate thing uh, going on over there. Right? And there you go. It's not that hard. Right, and this part's going to screw into the front. There you go, you see? There you go. I got my my paint, my primer already. All right, so uh, I'm trying to make it, you know, it's it's like hard to explain something that's really simple to do, right? It's just, you're cutting it, like I showed you in the other video, you're grinding it so this, so this piece would fit on there. And the same thing up front. The only thing you want to pay attention to, you know, what you really have to pay attention to is uh, you got to make sure you leave your meat, okay? Don't just cut. You know, make sure you're leaving that meat where that piece is going to go on there or you're going to be screwed. And the same thing with the front. Make sure you leave the meat where the piece is going to get screwed. All right. Now, a little thing I'm working out here. See on the bottom, I have this little lip. Right, and I have I'm gonna have this all this all is gonna be all filled in. Right? It's not really gonna be the screw that's really gonna be holding this sucker on there tight, right? What I'm gonna do is use J and B weld. Alright, so J and B weld is great stuff. You mix them together, you take a putty, and I'm gonna fill I'm gonna fill all that in with J and B weld, you know, fill it around, even fill all around here, right? And then I'm going to use my Dremel tool to make it all nice and pretty, right? Like I like you see the gun in its done version. It's pretty. I hope you think it's pretty. I think it's, the gun's probably, it's kind of ugly, right? And uh, <laughs> tell you the truth, but it's functional, right? I, I'll go into that later on. You know, it's, it's really weird for me because like, like in the beginning of the video, I'm showing you the gun. I didn't even make it yet. And now I'm using to put these parts like it's made already but it's not really made and i gotta edit this in it's like i'm just like i'm getting burnt down from it i'm trying to trying to it's like almost i like went like like time travel all right <laughs> but anyway there you go it's this the simple part the hardest part is cutting making your grooves and it's simple just fit it on there you fit that one on there and then you're just going to put the jb weld all in the cracks and you're going to put the JB weld over here. Or 
I got like another heavy duty, uh, heavy duty sort of like a glue epoxy I'm going to put on here first and then make sure that mounts on there and fill it in with the JB Weld. All right, and then I'm going to grind it all down. But that's what I'm up to. All right, that's what I'm up to right now is this and that. Right, I'm going to sand the whole stock. Right, I'm going to, very important, you want to, very important, you want to sand all your PVC down. And you want to sand your stock down, you know, get all the gloss off it, right? Sand it down, and you're going to hit it with a nice thing of primer. This primer is also good for plastic. It says, also bonds to plastic, which PVC is a family of plastic, right? And then I bought myself a nice satin black, where I'm going to spray the whole thing black. You know, I was going to do in camel, but that's such a waste of time in my book, right? Tell you the truth, I shouldn't have even painted it. It's a bit, it's functional. Well, you know, I gotta make it look a little pretty, right? All right, there you go. And most important, the J J uh, J B Weld is great stuff to fill everything in. It's a strong epoxy and it will bind everything together. It'd be like steel when you're done. Coffee. All right, guys. So that's what I'm up to, and uh, uh, I guess my next video I'll show you it all epoxied and grind it up right before I'm about to paint it, okay? guys this is where I'm up to okay I got my JB weld I put it all on the gun see how I got it on there it looks really sloppy right now but hey you see the finished product right but uh anyway the JB weld that it's like steel you you're not this is not coming off the same thing with the front part I removed that set screw because I don't even need it anymore I'm gonna fill that in with some JB weld right so if you don't want to use a set screw in there but it did help it stay in place while I uh, JB weld it you know, like I said, I got all my uh, all my JB weld all inside the cracks inside there, and make sure it was around the the piece of that little piece of wood I left standing out there. I put the JB weld on there, slid this on. Right now, I got enough room right to put my other attachments on. But there you go, the JB weld. Right, I was gonna put. I don't need no more JB weld. This is holding like steel now. So what I'm gonna use now, I'm just gonna use some five minute epoxy. This stuff bonds. Uh, it starts hardening in five minutes, but um, it goes to a full bond. You can start sanding it after 45 minutes to an hour, right? So this I'm going to use to go over all this. First, I'm going to sand it. See how I sanded it so I could scar it all up so the epoxy has something to grab onto. Now, the epoxy is just before cosmetic. I'm going to put all the epoxy there, fill in all my gaps all around here, and then I'm going to sand it down and make a nice smooth finish where it looks like part of the gun. You get what I'm saying? Same thing here. I'm going to use the epoxy to fill all this in. But remember to scar this up because it's pretty smooth once it dries up. You want to scar it up with a sander, right? So the G, so this epoxy, blah, 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 could uh, have something to grab onto once you sand it. Right? There you go. So that's what I'm up to now. Now it's coming to cosmetic stuff. All right, guys. Like I said, I put the JB Weld on. Then I use this epoxy. This stuff is really good for it, right? I use two different types of epoxy, but this is the type of epoxy uh, you should be using. It's uh, Pro Epoxy 20, really good stuff. You know, you mix it up, it comes in the tube, you mix it up, it's like clay. Once you start mixing up, it's like clay. Then you could start molding it, sorry, molding it around your stock, you know, like clay, so you can fill in all your imperfections, right? Once I got that done, I took my good old Dremel, Right, and I started uh, molding out my shape, what I wanted the stock to look like. So there you go, right there, and I got my front piece all nice and molded out. Now I'm going to use a little uh, sander, the mouse, all right, and I'm smoothing everything out on the stock. You know, like I said, you know, uh, I think I said in one part of this video that you could do this job in a few hours in a day, right? Or well, did I say that? Let me see, did I say that? You know, in one day, not even a few hours. All right, I did say that, 
But, you know, it's going to take you a few days. You're going to take your time and get it right, especially when you're starting to do this, because a lot of time you got to wait for the JB well to dry, then you got to wait for the epoxy to dry. And I always, I always say that you can start working on it after four hours. I always let it dry overnight, so I know I got a good, uh, good hardness on it. All right, so what I did, I stripped all the paint off the stock. Right? And there you go. I got my little uh, pot. So to me, I think it came out very nice. Look at that. Nice little groove on it. Right? And all I got to do is now just finish uh, doing some fine sand into it. And then I'm going to do some fine hand sand in it. Right? And then I'm going to... Sorry about that. My, my camera conked out. All right? And then I'm going to hit it with some primer. Right? So I'm going to put my uh, a few coats of primer on. And then I'm going to lightly sand the primer. Right? To fill in all the gaps and everything. And then I'm going to give it another final coat, lightly sand that, and then I'm going to put my finishing coat on. All right? I got a black, like a sort of like a satin black finish, and we should be good to go. So uh, we're going to, oh, and remember, hold on, I'll be right back with you, with the magic of editing. I'll be right back. There I am. I got it. See, so remember, all your PVC pipe, you want to sand it nice before you prime it. You want to scarf it up so the primer has something to stick to. All right, so don't forget to sand all your PVC pipes all down. So in other words, this part of the video, all right, I got it all molded out and see how that came. Let me just give you another look, right, which is I'm basically done. There's really not much more to show you. I'm going to I'm going to prime it and I'm going to paint it. And that's it. You got to finish uh, the product I'm going to show you. So you guys are smart enough. You know, I know you guys didn't sit around your whole life eating mayonnaise out of a jar. Okay, guys, there you go. I got it all done. You know, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. You know, there's some imperfections and all that. Now, that's expected. You know, I wasn't going to go crazy sand and like, it's not a thing of a beauty. It's a thing of survival. The thing is strong as nails, right? And it's, I, what I'm going to be using it for, it's going to work out perfect, right? And I'm going to go into, uh, on my next video coming up, I want to show you how I made it. On my next video up, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you what the gun in it. I'm going to reinstall the gun, right? And then it's not going to hurt the performance of the rifle. I didn't do anything really to it, but just change pieces in the stock. But now I do. I got right here, you know, you take this off. And I got my little storage compartment in here where I can fill this all up with stuff I want. Right over here. No more wasted just wood stock. You know, when you're making survival stuff, you want to try to have everything functional as much as you can. And the same thing back here. I pop this off, and I put all what I want to put in here. I want to put bullets, a flashlight, whatever. But I'm going to go into that on the next video. I'm going to show you all the uh, attachments I put on here. And uh, I'm going to show you what the gun in place. And uh, all the little cool things, like I'm going to show you how, what I put in here. And you could put anything you want in there. But what you just did, you just turned useless wood stock into storage compartments, right? And you can have this as a nice little survival thing. It was a fun project. You don't gotta go crazy. Like, I sanded it down. I could have fine sanded it, made it look really sheen. But you know what? It's good. It works great. You know, it came out nice, you know? It's really strong and sturdy, and uh, that's all I care about. I'm not into beauty. I'm not in the beauty contest here. I'm into functionality. That's what I want it to be, functional. All right, guys, so there you go. So watch my upcoming video. I'm going to show you how I rig this thing up, what I put in here, what I put on the outside, and everything else that goes along with it. And then, uh, and that's it. So watch for the next video. I'll see you guys soon. Live for today, prep for tomorrow, and learn how to use your digits. All right? Fool around with stuff. Don't just sit around on your chair watching TV. Go out into that garage and make some stuff. You know, anything, a small little project, a birdhouse. Get your mind going. Live for today, prep for tomorrow. I'll see you next time. All right, guys. The first thing I did here is I attached a lizard to the side of the, uh, the foregrip here. You know, because you never know. You got you have a lizard with you. You might be able you know, you, you get hungry. You can cook him. But he can catch flies for you in case you have to fish. All right, so Benjamin will be attached to the side of the, uh, to the stock here. All right? <laughs> Benjamin, everybody! Benjamin! All right, come on, get out of here. All right, there we go. <laughs> there he goes. All right, so let me just show you what I did here. First of all, what I did here. Let's start off with the outside. On the foregrip I did over here, 
I wrap paracord all around the front part of the, port, uh, the foregrip, right? So the paracord went around twice. So I went around twice on it. And the same thing I did with the back part of the stock, I went on around once, only the back. So it, out of a, I had a 50, uh, a roll of 50 foot paracord, and I must have used about 35 feet of paracord on this and back. So I have plenty of paracord on the gun. Right, just in case I gotta tie things up, make a shelter, you know what I'm talking about. Alright, so what else I did here, right? This part, right? The cap piece, if you hope you can see this pretty good, I got a compass. I found a little compass in uh in uh Dick's Sporting Goods. A little shout out to Dick's. I don't know why, but that's where I found it anyway. I put a little compass in this little uh, end cap. It fit perfect. I was so excited about it. I was like, wow. I was showing my wife, and she says, what's wrong with you? Right? Why are you so excited about that? I said, but you don't understand. It fit perfect in the end cap. All right, but that's, if you could see it, I hope you're seeing it good. All right? And on the other end, I put a little mirror, right? So you can have a reflective surface to signal jet planes and, you know, fighter jets to come save you. But there's a little round mirror on the back, if you can see that. I hope you can see it. Hey, look, if I shine it towards the camera. I wonder if you could see yourself. Can you? <laughs> but anyway, that's the little mod I did on the cap. So you got a compass with you all the time, and you got a little uh, mirror to signal. All right? Okay, let's move on. Let me let take this forearm grip off so I have some more room. All right? Let's move that. All right? What I got in there is a little float. Right, so I could fish, right, and I got one of these a little nano flashlight. Right, if you ever see them online, they're really great. Um, Low Buck Prepper turned me on to this about a year and a half ago. He was talking about them, and I bought a few of them, and I love them. They're really small, compact, and they throw off a lot of light. All right, so you got a little nano flashlight. All right, I put a little Gerber tool in there, right. Got a little pair of pliers, it has tweezers, it has a knife, it has a thing, you know, a little scissor in case you want to get a nice little hairstyle when you're out surviving in the woods, you can cut your hair, right? Has all little things in it, you know, it's a little mini uh, a Gerber tool. There you go, so fit in there perfectly. So this alone is going to save you big time, all right? On this end, I was able, because it sinks into the thing, I got some band-aids. Right, I put a, a bunch of band-aids in there, so if you can see them. And these band-aids, I picked these band-aids because they have that, uh, what do you call that stuff, that neosporin on it already. So if you get cut, you don't get an infection and it gets starts oozing and you turn into a face-eating zombie. These things are great. They have the neosporin on them already. If you get a little cut, you don't want, you know, you're out surviving. You don't want to be getting all annoyed because you get an infection. All right, now... And what I did here, hold on, all right, I'm going to use my trustworthy American flag, all right, okay, anyway, and here's the other thing I made, all right, so I'm going to try to show to you, so I hope you can see it pretty good, this is a little cap, and it has hooks in it, all right, I got a fire starter rod, right, and around the fire starter rod, I got a fishing line, so I got my hooks, my fishing line, my little float when I need it, and my fire starter. Very important things when you're trying to survive. But what else I'm going to put in there, I'm going to put a little big lighter in there too. Because it's always good to have two options, right, of fire starting. But there you go. This is what I'm just starting. Like right here, what I got right here, you got a compass, you got a mirror, you got a multi-tool, you, you got a little uh, a float, you got hooks, you got, a, you got a fishing line, fire starter, little nano flashlight. And the thing is not even filled up yet. The rest I'm going to say, hey, let's not forget the band-aids with the neosporin on it, right? This little bit right here <laughs> will save your life, along with the power cord, to build a shelter. You know, you get some branches and sticks, and you can build yourself a shelter. You can tie it all together, right? And this, is, this alone will save your life. But I do have more room in there, but the extra room is going to be filled up with more ammunition, right? So with the extra room I have... I could put about an additional 50 rounds inside this pipe, all right? So, like I said, I'm very simple. This is all I'm going to need to get me through a few days. I'm not going, if you're lost, you know, 
it would be great just to have these couple little things. If you just had your rifle in your hand, right, and you didn't have these attachments on there, and you're out there, you just want to go take a walk to be with nature or whatever, you want to hug a tree or something, right, and all of a sudden you got turned around, you couldn't find your way out, compass, everything, this will get you going for a few days, right, or even longer once you build a shelter and everything until somebody comes, comes and finds you, right, to rescue you by the woods, all right, okay, and there you go, that's, that's the... That's the front part of the stock. If you got any ideas like to put in there, hey, what else I'm going to put in there is some tin foil. Right? You might say, why, Tim? They got this heavy duty tin foil you could really roll up tight and slide it in there because, say, if you needed to boil something, right? You need a little, to boil a little bit of water or something, you could always mold the tin foil into like a little pot. You ever try that? I have. All right, and it works. Okay? So let me get this out of the way. Let me swing the butt of the gun around. Okay, now what I did with the back part, the back part here, right, is very simple. There's not a lot of stuff in here. There's one cool item that I really like that I put in there. Okay, so let me show you. Okay, back here, what I did is, is I got, these ain't, these ain't mag uh, holders for the 1022. These are like simple little um, speed loaders for like a 38, a 357. I think it was for 38. Right, but they fit the 1022 mag perfectly inside. So now I can have 10, 20, and a clip inside the cha uh, inside the gun. That would be 30 rounds. So I have an additional 30 rounds plus the 50 in there. Do the math, that 80 rounds. Okay, guys. And like I said, more power cord on the back. Right. And now, in the back part, I got this one item right here. This is a mag light. Now you might say, what's so special about that mag light you got there? I'm going to tell you what's so special about it. Okay, it has a couple of settings. Um, hopefully you can see them go up. You know, you got your brightness. If you do it again, it goes half bright. You do it again, it strobes, right? But this was the really cool part about this one, right? Because you got to have the strobe. If you got to walk away from your camp, at the, uh, it's night out to get some wood, you put the strobe on so you always could find your way back. This is the cool feature. You turn it off, put it back on. What is that? Who could tell me what that is? Oh, I didn't turn it off. Hold on. Okay, who could tell me what that is? Yeah, that's right. That's SOS. It has a little program in there where you just, when you turn it, it would just keep on blinking. SOS. And that's a survival flashlight. Mag light, put it out. You know, I don't know, it's just called Maglite. There was no special name for it, but on the package it did say uh, SOS, you know, uh, some features on it, uh, strobe, bright, dim, SOS. So go into, I bought it at uh, Home Depot, right? Fits right in the back nicely, and I still have extra room to put a couple of little items in there. You know, maybe some more, maybe, maybe some more neosporin or something. But that's what I'm up to, guys. So I got my power cord on the back. I added this, uh, the speed loaders along here. And, you know, and the front piece, like I showed you before. I got fishing line, fire starter, some hooks, and my uh, the little thing to, to, uh, to start the fire. All right, a little Gerber tool, compass, mirror, band-aids, a nano light for some extra light, and they work great. And a little, uh, a little fishing float. Okay. Hey, I just wanted to give you a quick update, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. I had a lot of fun putting this thing together. I, you know, I don't know what else I'm going to put in there, but right now I'm pretty much set on that. I think that's all I'm going to need. You know, what else am I going to need to survive? I got everything. I got fishing line. I got rope. I got anything I need. I got a gun, and I got a means to uh, get me some food and some water. All right, guys. Um, live for today. Prep for tomorrow. Smile.
everybody. It's Brooklyn Prepper. Okay, my project's done. All right, like I showed you. I'm um, really pleased with it. It came out pretty cool. You know, uh, lots of storage space. You got your rope. You got everything you need. Your power cord. Your extra magazines. Right, so... I'm very happy with it. It's a, it's a good survival rifle, and it's like, you know, the reason why I made this thing is because it's going to come up in my next coming video, right? But uh, mostly because I needed a gun that I could take down and, and fit in a small space, and I had two tw uh, Rugis already. I couldn't justify myself buying one of the breakdown ones they have now, but uh, so I decided to make this on my own. This goes to show you. You use your imagination, you use your hands, you use your mind, right? You could save a lot of money when, you, when you're doing this prep and stuff or just outdoors and survival, uh, being a survivalist or whatever you want to call them, right? Or just for camping and going out and having a good time, right? So there, there we go. So my little, I, I'm calling it, let me see, I'm going to call it the Ruger 1022 Prepper. That's the name of it, the Ruger 1022 Prepper. Got your storage bins, your storage bins. I put a nice little scope on it, right? And uh, there you go. So you got your magazines. Like I said, you got extra extra ammo in there, fishing stuff, a uh, little Leatherman tool and everything. Actually, a Gerber, right? And uh, the extra mags, man. What, what else can you ask for in a survival rifle? The only thing this thing is missing, right, is I want to get one of those uh, paracord uh, slings for it, right? I don't know how to make them. I really wish I knew how to make them. Hey, and if anybody does know how to make them, and if you do make them, give me a PM. I'll buy one off of you. If you can make me a nice uh, paracord uh, sling for this, tell me how much you want, and I'll send you the check or money order, whatever, and you send me the sling, right? Or all I would need is it like it's like a camo type uh, paracord. I would like. All right, guys. So there you go. The Ruger 1022 Prepper complete. Right? The thing works great. Right? I shot it. You know, a lot of some people ask about concerns or the accuracy, but it doesn't affect anything. It still bolts down correctly, and right. And I shot it. Uh, I shot it today, and and it worked fine. You know, very impressed by it. Give myself a pat on the back. I'm only kidding, guys. Anyway, so like I said, the the moral of the story is here. You know, just use your mind and your imagination, and you can make cool stuff. You can make good stuff. All right, guys. So. That's the final on the uh, 1022 prepper, right? And uh, live for today, prep for tomorrow. You know, maybe mm -hmm. in upcoming videos when I get time, because I've been really busy with the whole hurricane stuff. But maybe in upcoming videos, I'm going to take this gun out, right, for a weekend, right, and put it to the test and see how much I could do with it. All right, guys? i see you later. Live for today, prep for tomorrow. I'll see you next time. Walking on